I recently did a video of a lunar model program that I wrote, and uh, I decided to do another one because uh, I wanted to rewrite the program to be a little more explicit in what was going on under the covers. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do different, instead of showing the triangle on the model, uh, I wanted to show the individual vectors that were being calculated using Newton's equations. And there are actually these six vectors involved. There's a gravity vector, and then there are the individual X and Y uh, components of that gravity vector, a velocity vector, and its individual components, and the distance vector and its x and y components. And then in the documents constructor, I wanted to show how the initial conditions were being set up. Um, <clears throat> the color coding here is uh, this orange color is the, uh, the methods name. The uh, cyan color here is the class name and the uh, dark purple represent properties. The white is uh, constants. The green is comments. And uh, this um, pink color represents local variables, just uh, to make it clear what you're looking at. So uh, the initial conditions um, are uh, some of the important things are the lunar velocity. We know how long it takes uh, the moon to go around the Earth. We know uh, what the radius of its orbit is, so it's easy to calculate the velocity in meters per second. The, <clears throat> the uh, distance from the Earth to the moon is uh, the radius of the lunar orbit. Uh, the X and Y positions represent the uh, coordinates in meters. And uh, the way this is oriented, it's everything's with perspective of the moon. In other words, the distance is the distance from the moon to the Earth. And when you talk about an X and Y vector, that's important because the sign of a vector uh, is uh, tells you whether or not the moon is to the left or right of the Earth or uh, above or below the Earth. Then the mass of the Earth is here, and again, using Newton's equations, we're able to calculate the acceleration of gravity uh, based on that mass. And uh, that's basically how this is all set up. After these initial conditions are set up, then each of those vectors that I showed at the beginning are then populated uh, with the information necessary to uh, calculate the correct angles and positions, as well as some information on how the colors and so forth on how to draw them on the screen. So if I start to model up, it actually looks different than what it did uh, initially. Uh, it looks different than the first version, I should say. <clears throat> and then, in the lower left corner, you can see the, uh, uh, in this magenta text, you can see the position of the three position vectors, the S being the, the radius of the moon, and then the X version is the position with respect to the Earth again. So this is showing that the Earth is to the left of the moon because of the negative. And uh, the x is equal to the radius since y is zero, so they're the same at that point. And the angle is 180 degrees. So that's what this arc is showing over on the right. Um, the arc is showing 180 degrees from zero on the right. And that's why the text is upside down here, because the vector has been rotated over onto its back. The center text at the bottom is the uh, acceleration of gravity and its two vectors and its angle. And then on the right, the blue text is the, uh, the velocity due to gravity, 
and the x and y components of that. And the angle you see is 90 degrees out of phase with the other two vectors. So that's why it's pointing up. And the velocity is basically tangential to the orbit. I made a minor change to the, uh, to the toolbar. I now have a 30 degree step so that you can look at the state every 30 degrees. And the equations themselves are documented in orange text on the upper left side. So those are the basic changes I made to the presentation. I'm going to set this uh, single step, 30 degree step, and then start it running. And you can see the vectors then being recalculated as the orbit proceeds. There's some cyan text here which shows some, uh, the coordinates of the moon with respect to the Earth. And that first coordinate is the X coordinate, and it's saying that the Earth is 3,454 pixels from the y-axis of the Earth. And uh, it is 2,019 pixels above the x-axis of the Earth. So that's what those numbers mean. I'll go ahead and turn off the, well, I'll run one more step just so you can see it progress. And uh, you see the vectors all changing and the angles changing. And that's what those uh, vector classes that I showed you at the very beginning are doing. I'll turn off the single step and let it complete an entire orbit. And one thing you will notice is that the initial conditions down here of the three vectors will all return back to their original conditions. And that's a good sign. It says that things are doing what they're supposed to do. Let me make one other point. Um, it would be easy to assume that because we knew the orbital radius and we knew the uh, velocity, that the model would just be doing what our initial conditions said to do. But that would not be true because if you look at the code in the view that's calculating every time slice, which I have the time slices set to one second, every second in time, it calculates uh, a new uh, acceleration of gravity in the x and y direction, a new velocity in the x and y direction and a new position in the x and y direction. And these equations are just Newton's equations of motion. After it cycles through, uh, that loop is a 24-hour uh, period. And it's, using, and it's calculating those positions every second of that 24-hour period. And then the whole cycle repeats again. And every time it does one of those uh, one of those periods, then uh, it updates the display. Go back to the beginning of this, and you can see it's actually one hour that's being calculated in this loop, and then it re and then it uh, populates the display. And after each one of these uh, one hour sets of calculations, then the vectors are updated with the new position of the moon center here. So a point, having described what's going on underneath the covers, I'll go back to these initial conditions and make a change here. If it was only controlled by uh, the velocity we gave it or the mass of the Earth, for example, uh, if, if it was only controlled by the velocity, for instance, then um, changing something like the mass of the Earth would not uh, affect the radius of the orbit or anything else. But because we are using Newton's equations, if I change something as fundamental as the mass of the Earth, then uh, you would expect that model not to look the same afterwards. So I'm going to multiply the mass of the Earth by three quarters. And then I'm going to recompile the program. 
and we can see what the effect will be. All right, it's compiled. And I'm gonna start it running. So everything looks the same right now, except that this number is different from the original. And then I'm just gonna let it run and see how the orbit looks with a, a slightly less heavy earth. And now you can see the orbit is no longer circular, but is elliptical. And if we, as scientists, got the mass of the Earth wrong, then our model will no longer accurately predict what the moon is really doing. And we know that we've got the science wrong. And that's the whole purpose of a, a computer model. It's not to do science. It's to verify science. And if our understanding of science is wrong, then our model will be wrong as well. Thank you for watching my video.